Hi, welcome to the May 3rd, 2020 service uh, for um, Faith Fellowship Church of Tennessee, Illinois. I am Dave Scott, your pastor. Uh, to give you an idea what we're going to be doing this morning, I have uh, announcements and prayer requests, uh, scripture reading, have the message, and then um, after the message, uh, there will be a recording of our choir singing the solid rock. Would you join me in prayer? Lord God, thank you for this day. Holy Spirit, you know, um, my mind is uh, not as focused as it needs to be at this time. Uh, nervousness there, I'm not really sure why, distractedness maybe. But I would ask for myself and for all those who will be listening to this that you would just draw us to yourself right now to help us to take a breath, Holy Spirit of God, and let you bring us into your presence and teach us the things that you're so willing and so patient uh, to teach us. How we thank you for your great love for us. Our God, everlasting love, everlasting care of us. How we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So first four announcements. Uh, Tip Cam is not doing well. Uh, please pray for him and Janice. Uh, pray for each other. We need to pray for each other. We need to love our brothers and sisters in Christ in that way where we are praying for each other. Pray for our president, our Congress, uh, state and national Congresses, our governor, uh, President Trump, Governor Pritzker, the many hurting people in our world, uh, many hurting terribly, anguishing uh, long before COVID-19. Uh, but uh, many going through this and and uh, they're wondering where they're, how they're going to, to make a way through it. Uh, so many have already lost businesses, uh, lost job opportunities, college students, wondering what's coming next, graduating seniors, the same thing. So there's no shortage of those uh, that we need to be lifting up before the Lord and and of course, uh, first and foremost, for their salvation. We have congratulations and thanksgiving in order for the birth of baby Evan Titus Mendenhall. Uh, next, our DVD delivery route is up to 12 customers now. I feel like I'm back at home and um, I have my, uh, like my newspaper route, so I've got a DVD delivery route now. Uh, pray for Janice Cam along this line. I should have thought about this before, but I hadn't. But I can send her the DVDs. Uh, she's going to see if Eddie can help her, see if they, for one, if they have one, get it hooked up. But she would like to do that. But please pray for her and Tip. Uh, he's having a very difficult time. Um, I put the midweek message on the DVD at the very end. And so those of you who are accessing it on the YouTube channel, you're getting it on the, the day that I share it on Wednesday, but those for the DVD, um, you'll have that at the very end. You can choose, of course, when you want to watch that. With the stay-at-home order extended, let's keep praying that we can meet again beginning on June 7. And with that in mind, uh, let's pray as to what that might look like when we do come together again. Uh, service form and function, seating and greeting arrangements, and uh, just uh, again the, the joy of looking forward to that great appreciation, but we can be, we can be thinking ahead as to um, what we can do first and foremost, of course, to honor our Lord, uh, but also uh, help people to feel safe and comfortable in, in coming again. And then also along that line, uh, praying for people that that when they get when the level of anxiety is 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 low enough that they that they don't feel guilty if they don't feel comfortable say we can start on June seventh but they don't still they don't feel comfortable yet that that don't worry about that just put it before the Lord and and let God speak to you concerning that I had mentioned as far as giving I know we've had 
more questions, people wondering. Uh, just keep up your faithful waiting, and hopefully, well, um, you know what we might have to do on June 7th, we might have to hire a, a Brinks armored car. I'll check with Connie about that because all those big fat checks that are going to be coming in. But that silliness aside, uh, one person said, well, this person said he's just uh, writing his check like we would be there, and then when we meet again, then there, there it goes. Uh, you are so faithful. Faith Fellowship Church of Tennessee, Illinois, you are so faithful. And I think I said earlier, we have another song at the end of this morning's <clears throat> message. I actually was uh, finishing things up, and I thought, wow, a good song would be the solid rock. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And then it, I remembered I have a recording of our choir singing that. So that is my plan, to have that at the end. Let's pray again. Holy Spirit of God, we do ask you again now to slow us down, calm us, push away the distractions, fear, anxiety, whatever it might be, that we allow you to find your rightful place in our heart and mind as, as Lord over all. Holy Spirit, would you teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ or judgment? That's a really good question. And it's also the subtitle that the New American Standard Bible gives before Hebrews 10, 26, uh, Christ or judgment. And I'm right there with those folks. I'm, this is such a good, simple, straightforward, eternally relevant question to have on our minds, Christ or judgment. Hebrews 10, 26 for if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God? and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, and has outraged the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It seems like a lot of people, like many, many people, want to hear about Jesus. You know this, don't you? Many people, we, we want to hear about Jesus, but few want to hear about judgment. And it seems that fewer and fewer are willing to preach concerning God's judgment, but we really need to wonder, how can that be? Why would you, a preacher, or anyone who professes to believe in Christ for salvation, why would you not want to think through such an important question? And wouldn't you think in a society where we absolutely demand choices, demand the facts, you know how we are, no fake news for us, but, well, we don't really hold to that, but we say that, demand of those in authority over us to give us reliable, sound information, so why wouldn't we want to examine? <laughs> why wouldn't we want to examine all the facts when it comes to our eternal destiny? Don't you want to consider the eternal difference between your life being in the hands of the living God through the salvation he offers rather than falling into his hands in judgment, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But the trend of society in general, and it's always been this way, is to scoff at the idea of a coming Christ. Ha! Christ or judgment, heaven or hell, who believes, who believes such nonsense anymore? 2 Peter 3, verse 3, 2 Peter 3, verse 3, Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, 
following their own sinful desires. They will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlook this fact, that the heavens existed long ago. And the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. The reality is, the real reality, the truth. We all want the truth. Well, here's the truth. We want reality. Here's reality. The reality is that one day, one coming day, God is going to shake the heavens and the earth. Haggai 2.4, Haggai 2.4, Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. According to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit remains in your midst. Fear not, for thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once more, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. The writer of Hebrews continues that theme, Hebrews 12, 25. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they, refu escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. How do I survive that? How does a person survive God shaking heaven and earth? One way. The only way. Jesus Christ. Our text gives us such assuring, powerful, powerful insight into the salvation God offers us through Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also suffered, died, once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. How do we make it through the waters of judgment? How do we survive when God shakes heaven and earth? Count on this. Christ will bring those who trust in him to God. He will. Christ will bring those who trust in him to God. Safe passage guaranteed. Jesus Christ is the ark of our salvation. First, this morning, we'll look at victory one. Christ died for our sins to bring us to God. First Peter 3.18, I will read it again. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. So simple, so powerful, so assuring. Our salvation, Christ died for our sins. Why? Well, many things, We this is gift of salvation, but, but here's something very, very powerful. He died for our sins that he might bring us to God. Now, can you ask yourself, if, that's, if Christ's intent is to die for our sins, to bring us to God, is he going to be able to accomplish that? Well, of course he can. Well, of course he can. Romans 6.10, for the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Hebrews 7, 27. He has no need like those high priests to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. 
Hebrews 9.26, for then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews 10.10, 10, and by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Christ died for our sins that he might bring us to God. Victory won. Second, victory proclaimed. Christ proclaimed his victory to provide confident assurance in and strong testimony to his decisive, sufficient, total, and final victory over sin and death. Chapter 3, verse 19, 1 Peter, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through the water. John 19, 30, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Uh, Hebrews 4.3 refers to his, his work of salvation, that it was finished before the foundation of the world. Colossians 2.14, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. In 1 Corinthians 15, 54, when the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to share a bit from uh, John MacArthur's commentary. So good, he covered this so well. But basically, this text here in uh, 1 Peter, it can be very complicated or it can be, it can be not nearly so complicated. See, a key in this whole, in this whole text is Christ died for our sins to bring us to God. So victory won. Now victory proclaimed. He wants to give us the, the solid proof, the testimony, how decisive his victory is. And so scripture recorded this inst incident where he went to the, this, this place, the, the, uh, the abyss, and he proclaimed his victory. Maybe they thought they had finally achieved victory over the Son of God. But he, to, to show them those, those doubters, those fallen angels, those demons, he went and he proclaimed his victory. Name above all names, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Here's some of MacArthur's commentary. I'll try to move through it quickly. But you've, you've got it in your notes. Uh, you need to read it. it. It's really good. Scripture teaches us, teaches that God has sovereignly chosen to incarcerate certain demons in that pit of punishment. The demons incarcerated in the abyss are undoubtedly the most wicked, vile, and perverted of all the fallen angels. The prisoners now, the spirits now in prison in the abyss are those who were once disobedient in the days of Noah. They are demons who cohabited with human women in Satan's attempt, attempt to corrupt the human race. And what MacArthur will say there too is, the, the demons themselves, what this is, is it, it, it's uh, men who were possessed by the demons. And, and it, it, this, there was this very Im, Im, impressive men that came, and this race of humans of, uh, that came from that. They were very accomplished. They were powerful. They were leaders. And they were corrupt to the core. And so God ended up and all but eight people, he destroyed this world. This powerful force of evil against good. So, so Christ said, I will, I, will show, I will go to your darkest place. I will go to your place of imprisonment. And that's what he did. 
He wasn't preaching for their salvation. He didn't go to hell to preach for salvation to give people another chance. He was proclaiming his victory. And that is great assurance for us. We see the decisiveness, the finalities, the sufficiency of what Christ has done. I'm going to let you read this. Uh, I'll, read, I'll read one more. And then, like I say, you've got this in your notes. But uh, the fallen angel's long effort to demonize people, hinder the re redemptive purpose of God, and prevent the seed of the woman, see that in Genesis 3.15, from crushing Satan's head and sending the demons into the lake of fire, was ultimately foiled at the cross. He, 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 he publicly humiliated his enemies at the cross. When he said, it is finished, he finished the work that he came to accomplish. And Satan and his cohorts, as they already were doomed, but if they didn't know it then, they would know it at that time. One last from MacArthur. Perhaps by then they thought he had lost the upper hand over them, but such was not the case. Instead, he appeared in their midst and proclaimed his triumph. So victory won and victory proclaimed, and now victory fulfilled. Jesus Christ himself is the ark that will bring us safely to God. Again, a key throughout this text in understanding as we're going to come to this difficult statement, it's not really that difficult when you understand the text, but initially it seems to be now baptism saves. <clears throat> and we're going to look at what that baptism is, but the whole point is Jesus Christ died for our sins to bring us to God. How does he do that? He is the ark. He is the ark that carries us over the waters of judgment. Victory fulfilled, Jesus Christ himself is the ark that will bring us safely to God. 1 Peter 3, 20 to 22, because they formerly did not obey God when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. So we want to approach this first. We want to look again at the meaning of baptism. And I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on this because especially through our Galatians series, we see scripture makes it very clear that baptism, water baptism, is not required for salvation. What scripture is also very clear about, which some people brought up in certain traditions, they don't understand, they think any time baptism is mentioned in the Bible, that it is uh, water baptism, but what you, you, we have to understand the literal meaning, and we have to un allow the context then to show us what to use at that time. It means literally to be immersed, to be submerged, to be put into fully. So notes on baptism. What we generally think concerning baptism is our act of obedience upon which after confessing our sins and our faith in Christ, having been born again by the Holy Spirit unto a new life, we identify publicly with the fellowship of Christ in the church and are immersed in water. That's believer's baptism. It's a good thing to do. But the word is broader than that. The word baptism is a transliteration of the Greek word baptisma, the verb the verb form means literally to dip repeatedly, to immerse, to submerge, to cleanse, etc. So we have that, the general meaning of the word. We have a dis brief description of believer's baptism. But the baptism here that it's speaking of is the baptism of the Holy Spirit of God. Okay, another, and, it's, and, and I have here, it's, it's probably more important than the thought of, of water baptism, the speaking of putting us into Christ. Another possibly more important concept of baptism is when we are immersed into Christ by the Holy Spirit. We are now identified as those who are in Christ. An example of, uh, of uh, baptism being immersed uh, the, that's neither water baptism nor the baptism into Christ. It's just using that word as they were immersed into Moses. We'll see in 1 Corinthians 10.1, they were identified with Moses. They were completely identified with him. 
Um, 1 Corinthians 10, 1, For I do not want you to be aware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses. It's very clear this isn't speaking of, uh, in, uh, of uh, water baptism. Again, the word baptized, it's a transliteration. It means immersed. They were immersed. They were part. They were identified with Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Just as an example of that being used. Next, we see we have been delivered for transport. So if you have the idea in your mind, which I believe is the biblical idea, the idea that we should have, that Jesus is the ark of our salvation. As uh, Noah's ark, it, it carried them through the waters of judgment. They were safe inside. Uh, it's the same with uh, Jesus Christ. And I think we'll see that here. I think that's what this text is teaching us. When we have, been, we have been delivered for transport. Or transport to where? Christ died for our sins to bring us to God. We're, we're ready for transport to be brought to God. We were brought into the ark, into Christ, when we sincerely, that means genuinely, believed in Christ. When we believed in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and received eternal life, we were immersed into Christ. Colossians 1, 13 and 14, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. We were into Christ. Romans 6, 3, baptized into Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, 27, baptized into Christ. This is not water baptism. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that it speaks of in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. What is that one body? The body of Christ, into Christ. Next, we see, we see there that in Christ, we would have been delivered for transport. We've been, if you could picture, if you see some of these old movies and, and these uh, sailing vessels and they have the, the dock and, and the wooden ramp and you see people boarding the ship. Well, that's what it is, into Christ. We are, we're boarding the ark. The ark of our salvation is Jesus. We're boarding the ship. Uh, now, Christ is our transport, and God is our guaranteed destination. I'll say it again. Christ died for our sins. He suffered for our sins to bring us to God. So, Christ is our transport. God is our guaranteed destination. If you believe God, if you believe the Bible, if you believe Christ, if you believe the Holy Spirit, if you believe these words are inspired, then we understand God is our guaranteed destination. We are now in the ark in Christ. We've uh, loaded, we're, we're waiting for takeoff. Romans 8, 1, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the old, the new has come. Ephesians 1, 3, it speaks of in Christ. Ephesians 2, 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 3, 6, in Christ. Uh, one on your, that's not on your study sheet, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. And it talks about, and the dead in Christ will rise first with the voice of an archangel and the sound of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ. Who are the dead in Christ? Those whose bodies are still in the grave. This tells us that when we are raptured, the trumpet call, that they will rise first. But it's everybody who is in Christ where we have guaranteed safe passage to God. Christ died for our sins to bring us to God. He will accomplish that. In Hebrews 3.14, we've come to share in Christ. And then the last verse, I believe it's the very last verse of 1 Peter. It's 1 Peter 5.14. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. So, in conclusion this morning, I want to give us, uh, I hope to give us some perspective. And uh, we'll look at our question, Christ or judgment. I want us to look, just to, to broaden our perspective maybe. COVID-19 is a pandemic. It is, it is a force to be reckoned with, isn't it? But COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, who's, who's ever view you're listening to, it does not hold a candle 
to the global crises that are described in Scripture. You, you, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, well, we're going to get to that. It's a pandemic, but it's nothing compared to the global crises that are described in Scripture. When the first global crisis hit the planet, everyone died. Every, if you believe the Bible, you, you know that. When the first global crisis hit the planet, everyone died. Adam and Eve ignored God's instruction and brought the curse of death and destruction to every living person on earth. The mortality rate was 100%. As I said, COVID-19, pandemic, yes. A force to be reckoned with, yes. Take our precautions, yes. Be wise about things, yes. Hold a candle to this global crisis, 100% mortality rate, no. Let's put it in perspective. Second global crisis, God wiped out the entire population of earth except eight people, Noah and his family. That's pretty astounding, isn't it? Stunning, really, when you think about it. So we had the first global crisis, 100% mortality rate. Second global crisis, well, just statistically, there, there could have been hundreds of thousands of people at that time that we, we did going through Genesis population studies, could have been millions of people at that time. See, it's, the issue is always Christ or judgment, God or judgment. But the third glo global crisis, as, as stunning as those two are, the third global crisis will top them all because God will wipe out everything. The heavens will pass away with the roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. The heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. Earth will be no more. Earth will be no more. Those are the three global crises that are described in Scripture. Now, we could look at the time of the tribulation, and, and certainly that is global and it's devastating. But it's really not in the category as these other three. So all of this the coming, these global crises, that there have been two of them, the third one is coming. How do we survive that? How do we, well, with an ark. How do we survive that? How do we, well, we need an ark. Uh, Noah's ark won't do us any good in that, but we can learn some lessons from Noah. So first, lesson we learned from Noah, because the tie is very clear in our text, Noah and the ark, Christ is our ark. Christ takes us through the waters of, these aren't baptismal waters. These are the waters of judgment. This isn't us being immersed. This is us being carried in Christ through everything that happens, through all the global crisis, God shaking heaven and earth, Christ carrying us safely because Christ died for our sins to bring us to God. He is the ark of our salvation. But Noah found favor with God. Genesis 6, 8, but Noah found favor in the eyes of God. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. So that's, that's a good lesson. He found favor with God. Noah walked with God. Second, Noah's life of obedience demonstrated his faith in God. Some of these mundane statements are so powerful in Scripture. If you're reading your Bible through, you'll, you'll see those, and, and I think you'll, you'll be like me, and the Holy Spirit will, will kind of nudge you at times and say, hey, are you paying attention to this? Well, here's two of those verses. Uh, Genesis 6, 20, 22. Noah did this. <laughs> it seems so simple, doesn't it? But God had given him, in, given him instructions, and it says in Genesis 6, 22, Noah did this. In fact, he, he did all that God commanded him. Genesis 7, 5, same thing. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. How do you know if you're one of God's chosen ones? How do you know if you're saved? How do you know if you're a believer? Do you obey him? If you don't, have, if, if, if you don't obey him, if, if you can't see that, maybe ask somebody, say, hey, do what, what do you think? Am I obeying God? If you're not getting feedback from God, from his, from his word, uh, just some profession you're hanging on to, well, remember, God's going to shake everything. And if you're not in the ark, if you're not in Christ, if you're not in Christ, you do not have safe passage. Well, third, Noah built an ark. Now, uh, we can't build an ark, and uh, that wouldn't help us. The analogy falls apart a little bit here, but here's what we can 
from Noah building the ark, what we can draw on from that is that Noah listened to God and Noah accepted God's plan to escape the waters of judgment. I hope you followed that. We can't build an ark. Noah's, God's plan for Noah was Noah build an ark. Well, Noah listened to God and he accepted his plan to escape the waters of judgment. God won't tell us to build, we have an ark, we, we believe in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit puts us into him. We're, 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 we're delivered for transport. And now we're in him and he will be carried, safe passage. He died for our sins to bring us to God. Genesis 6, 13, and God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. Moses, or Noah rather, listened to God, and he did what God said. Noah ex listened to God and accepted God's plan to escape the waters of judgment. Now here's a very powerful verse of that in Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. And without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Here's where we're coming to. By faith, see, believed God. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, as concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and become an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Did you ever think of what might have gone through Noah's mind as he's spending all those years building that ark and, and what kept him going? Well, his faith. He just kept believing God. And here it said, concerning events as yet unseen. But he, he, he lived as those things were true. As we have things yet unseen, if we truly have faith, Faith, if we truly believe God, will live as those things are real, just as we're taught sometimes to live in the imminent return of Jesus Christ, the second coming of Christ. Again, it's Christ or judgment. That we live in view of these coming things and here and in reverent fear. What takes care of our human fear but is this reverent fear for God where we come before him in all of his holiness. We draw near to God and he will draw near to us. Well, fourth here, Noah and his family entered the ark. All the others, if they hadn't gone in the ark, it wouldn't have helped, would it? He could have been faithful, listened to God, built the ark, got all the animals in, but he had to enter the ark. Genesis 7, 6, Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters came upon the earth, and Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. So, Jesus is the ark of our salvation, how do we enter the ark? Well, you believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. When you believe in Jesus Christ, what happens at that instant, at that moment, is the Holy Spirit of God puts you into Christ. And then you are now in Christ. And Romans 8.1 tells us, Romans 8.1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. See, no condemn, no judgment. Christ your judgment? Well, now judgment's off the board for those who are in Christ. Never, uh, no condemnation. See, we, simple statement of scripture, right? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are on the boat. On, an ark is defined as a, as a large ship on, on Christ. In Christ. In Christ. No condemnation. Jesus is the ark of our salvation. All the, the shaking, the earth and heaven and, and the waters of judgment and, and fires burning everything, we're safe. We, we are in the ark, in the ark of our salvation. Ephesians 2.13, but now in Christ Jesus... You who once were far off, what's that mean? You were far off. Your op only option at that time was judgment. You hadn't come to Christ yet. Your, your category was judgment. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. 
How do you enter the ark? Believe in Jesus Christ and believe, be saved. Believe that his shed blood, that act of sacrifice of the Son of God, literally on this earth, on a cross, about 2,000 years ago, you believe in that to be sufficient for the forgiveness of sins. So Christ or judgment is the question. I don't know why people, especially preachers, would want to stay away from that I guess why why would why would you not it for all the complications of this world and all the decisions to be made don't you want to bring people face to face to this coming event it's Christ or it's judgment would you choose Christ today let's pray Lord God the almighty thank you Oh, how we thank you for your word of truth. How we praise you. Lord, I lift up Faith Fellowship Church of Tennessee, Illinois. Lift up Tip and Janice Cam, our, those in authority over us. That Thank you for baby Evan's healthy birth, for so many ways that you work in our lives, mostly though for salvation. Help us to honor you with our lives. Help us to honor you with the gospel that we share. Help us to understand, Lord, we don't know this is the end. We don't know this, this pandemic sweeping our world is a foreshadowing, but it could be. Help us to be awake. Help us to not be asleep. We are children of the day, not of the night. Help your church to know this. How we praise you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for teaching, speaking to us, for drawing us to yourself this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me.